All right, hello and welcome to Plant-Based Homestead Prepper, where we make prepping fun. In this video, we're going to be showing you the food shortage hmm, in Germany. So cute intro. Hey guys, it's Jennifer from Heartseat Warriors Forum. I hope you're enjoying all of the edutainment that you're getting right here on Plant-Based Homestead Prepper with my honey, Roger Chappelle. When you're done, pop over to my channel where we'll be discussing the extraordinary stories of ordinary people. For now, cue the intro. All right, <clears throat> before we even get started real good, I want to let the pictures roll and I want to thank Christina Hummel. Christina Hummel, she is a subscriber that lives in Germany and uh, she went out, we've been talking for a while and what she did, she went out and took some pictures. I was like, hey, send me some pictures. I'll be glad to show them. So she went to this store. <clears throat> uh, the name of it is Penny. Okay, it's in Germany. And it's kind of like our American Lidl, okay? So just be mindful that this is kind of like our American Lidl. So without further ado, uh, further ado, <laughs> you notice right there? Look at there. Um, and yeah, of course, I have no idea <clears throat> about the uh, the money and what the, um, I think they use the franc there. I have no idea what the, um, you know, what the dollar is to the franc, if that's even the uh, the German currency but as you roll it rolling through okay that, that was a blurry picture right there but that was pizza uh looks like that some kind of milk uh product there's some pastries right there you see at the bottom it's empty shelves open spaces she's pointing right here it looks like sugar to me okay and then she even wrote oil is low okay so it must be like only a few things okay so that was actually rice that she was pointing at and um, she said the rice was was not you know not there, not available. Uh, jars, jar, I guess that's equivalent to our pickles and uh, canned goods. There's some more canned goods right there, as you can notice, and it is absolutely open spaces and empty shelves. So, just like here in the United States, you know things are are st starting to spread, <clears throat> and we don't know. Apparently, it's, it, it was important enough for her to contact me, and she's been watching our channel for a while. And we, like I said, we've been corresponding for a minute, back and forth. And uh, and she, you know, she was like, "I love your videos. Thank you for, you know, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for sharing with people, letting folks know that um, that you know America is is going through a food shortage." She like, but my country is doing the same thing. I'm like, where are you? I'm in Germany. I'm like, oh my goodness. You mean tell me that you guys are over there having problems, you know, getting certain things too? She's like, yes. So I was like, send me some pictures and we'll talk about it. So as you can tell, you know, certain things on, um, you know, and, and, and like I said before, it must be something that she has noticed over a period of time because who... In their right mind, after the first time of going into a store, would be willing to take pictures, take what you know, take the time that it takes to upload the pictures, and and then send them to somebody, and then explain. Cause she sent me, she sent me several messages explaining what was going on. You know, these are beans right here. She told me that in the message. Uh, these are pastries and bread. You know, like I tell you guys when I'm shopping, the telltale sign is when you go to the pastry aisle. You know, like the spaghetti and the the noodles. And when you go to the bread, because it shows you, you know, what is what is lacking. It shows you what we're missing, what we're looking for. So um, there you have it. Looks like you know the sugars and the flowers right there. They're missing. She pointed out the rice in this picture. Um, that the, that rice at the bottom looks kind of like our Uncle Ben's, didn't it? <laughs> Oil is low. I mean that that's one thing that you know that we all as prep. We, we stock up on we stock up on oil we stock up on rice and if they're already going through um, a shortage right now just imagine you know imagine how long this this could you know this is but the thing about it this is just the start this is only the beginning <clears throat> and hopefully and prayerfully it doesn't get any worse hopefully it stays at shortage and hopefully it does not move into crisis. Because like I keep telling you guys, the shortage, okay, that's okay. Because every now and then that means some things are going to be missing. 
But if we move from shortage into crisis, which I'm afraid the handwriting is on the wall and that's what it's looking like, it's going to get really bad. That's why, you know, we encourage you guys to go out every week. And I understand everybody's on a budget. I know that you're on a budget, but you're going to have to start putting some money to the side so that you can um, you can stock up on, on food. You're going to have to. And then more important than that, you're going to have to learn how to grow some food yourself. You know, and I encourage you to go back and watch the playlist um, of growing food in the channel because I teach fruit trees because I know for a fact that fruit trees are easy to grow. I know they are very hard to kill. And I know that over a period of time, you're going to get way more bang for your buck. You know, so I encourage you to go out now. Go out, start now. Even if you just have like, you know, and, and watch our series prepping on $5 a week. Matter of fact, I uploaded one today where it was like, Hey, go out. Let me show you what five dollars will buy you. You'd be so surprised if you did it every week. How much you'd be able to accumulate over this, you know, while we're going through this food shortage. Now, be mindful. And I went in, you know, went in, um, went into a Walmart today. Be mindful of the fact that the closer we get to Walmart, you're going to be lulled into a false sense of security. Because everything is going to look like it's in abundance. They have to do that. Because Thanksgiving and Christmas are two of the biggest eating holidays that we celebrate here in the United States. Now, I've never lived anywhere else, even though I've traveled, you know, many places. As a matter of fact, I spent, a, I spent a Thanksgiving in Puerto Rico. And it was the same way in Puerto Rico. Now, that's, you know, that's still western society so i don't know what other countries do around thanksgiving time I, I doubt they celebrate it like we do but just be mindful that when you go into these stores starting you know this week you're going to start seeing more food and i just really believe they've been planning this out especially the stores you gotta you gotta understand this is the biggest time and the biggest sales for the stores so of course naturally they're going to have food. And it's just like I, I told you guys a, a couple, few weeks ago. I said, the closer it gets to Thanksgiving, the more turkeys you're going to see. Now, be mindful that right now you're going to see food and you're going to start seeing meat prices go down. Why? Because the farmers and the ranchers cannot feed their livestock. Okay? They can't feed them. Because remember, we're only pulling out about 60% of our corn in, this, in, in the country. So, like I told you guys a few weeks ago, if you are used to living on 100% of your finances, and then all of a sudden it goes down drastically to 60%, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to start cutting back. You're going to have to start selling things. you got to start getting rid of expenses and expenditures. You're not going to have any kind of... Um, disposable income same thing with these farmers and these ranchers think about it if you own a thousand turkeys and you know in your business that you can sell 500 and then you'll be able to replenish for next season next year around turkey time around thanksgiving but you can't afford to feed them because food prices have gone up drastically because there's no you know there's limited food to feed and i'm just using turkeys as an example um a better example would probably be beef. You know, you have a thousand head of cattle <clears throat> and you know that if you take 500 to slaughter, then you'll be good for next season. But you can't afford to feed them because food is scarce. Prices are going up. Then you're going to take, you know, instead of taking half of your stock, uh, your livestock to slaughter, you may have to take 60 or 75 percent. And if that happens and at the at the at the um at the yard where they where they take them, they run across you know across the scales. Instead of paying a, a a dollar a pound, maybe they're only paying seventy five cents a pound, or maybe eighty cents a pound, or whichever. You're the one that's taking the hit as the farmer and as the as the rancher. You're taking the hit <clears throat> because the auction house is still going to make their money. They're going to make that ten percent off of every animal, okay? And then when the people who buy the beef go to butcher. Then it's going to take more money to butcher because you're butchering, you know, more and everything is going to eventually go up. It's simple supply and demand. If you have too much of one item, 
then the price goes down because you got to get rid of it. If you have too much, if you have too much of one item, prices go down. If you don't have enough, then prices go up. So, for example, we don't have enough food, so prices are going up. Prices go up on food. That means beef is going to go down for for a while because you can have a flood of beef coming through the market, chicken flooding to the market. You know because the ranchers can't afford to feed their livestock. When that happens. After it, after it settles out and everybody goes out and buys and have a good time and jolly good time and hey Santa Claus is coming, guess what's going to happen then? Then the pre the, the food prices are going to rise drastically because they're not coming to market anymore. They're not bringing their cows to market. They're not bringing their chickens to market. Now it's going to be scarce and things and prices are going to go up. So I, I want to thank again Christina Hummel from Germany. And uh, I want to thank her for sending us these pictures. You guys, hopefully, you um, hopefully you'll take heed of this because it's not just in the United States anymore; it's spreading abroad. And we have partners and we have family members that are willing to stick their necks out, take pictures in you know in these places, and send them to us. So thank you, Christina. Subscribe to our channel. Bye. Subscribe to our channel. Yes, subscribe to our channel. Say it again. Subscribe to our channel. Yes, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> Welcome to Plant Based Homestead Prepper. I am Grim from Grim Survival, where we talk about SHTF scenarios, food shortages, things I see while driving this thing, and solar minimums, among many other things. But back to your regular scheduled program. Cue the intro. Hi, I'm Christina, and you are watching Plant Based Homestead Prepper. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hey guys, it's Jennifer Chappelle with Heart Speak Warriors Forum. I hope you're enjoying all of the entertainment that you're getting right here on Plant Based Homestead Prepper with my honey, Roderick Chappelle. When you're done, pop over to my channel at Heart Speak Warriors Forum, where we will take ordinary people and listen to their extraordinary stories. Hope to see you guys there.